Why are the Calvinists and Catholics so blind? And I don't just mean them. Pick the JWs, SDA, fit your denomination name here, Baptist. I don't, I don't you know, it's 24,000 denominations. Name them all. What are they all doing wrong? It's not so much what they're doing wrong, it's what they're not doing. They're not asking God for the answers. They're not looking at Bible. You know what they're looking at? Each other. I just did that preterism series with the replacement theology and the whole reason why it's so wrong and so retarded is because they're not looking at the Bible but they are looking at the Jews and they're looking at them in the wrong way. That's it. One of the crowning characteristics of Christian religion and it's not just Christian but I'm going to pick them is that everybody's running around quoting everybody else except God except the Bible crowning characteristic of Catholicism and Calvinism is that they always talk about Dr. So and so said Dr. This and so said what about what the Bible says did you consult it? And they don't. The preterists get what they get wrong because they're not looking at the Bible. They're looking at dear Dr. So-and-so, namely Calvin or the Church Fathers or some other guy who talked about the Bible in the past. They're not going back to the source. They're not revisiting it de novo. They're looking at what some name in their group who they respect said. They're looking at what some other human said. Not what God says. The only time they look at what God says, and then it's too late, they aren't doing it enough so they can't read it when they look at it. The only time they look at what God says is when somebody's arguing with them or they don't understand something. And there's no dire doctor so-and-so who said something about it. So then they have to go to the Bible. Well, you know what? They're rusty at that point. They aren't using 1 John 1, 9. They haven't been in the system. So when they read the Bible, they're blind. They're just blind. You know, you can quote a thing and not know it. You can say a thing and not know it. You can brush your teeth without thinking. It's the same idea. You're so used to certain words and certain this and certain that that you don't even think about it anymore. That's what they've been doing for 2,000 years. Dispies are not, I mean, they are a little bit, I mean, at least they know there's pre-trib rapture. Okay, but they do their bad accounting just the way the prayers do. They're all using lunar years. They're all thinking David died at age 70. They're not going back to the Bible. They're all using everybody else's estimates of when what happened in the Bible. They're not really using the Bible because every time they go to the Bible, their eyes glaze over. So much easier to go to dear Dr. So-and-so, who everybody respects, and quote him. That's why 2,000 years they've been in the dark. So what you're seeing now over the 2,000 years is a pervasive blindness of people not wanting to go back to the Bible to reconcile, to prove, to correct that's the function of Hebrews 4.12 and so instead they take advantage of their little prejudices against the Jews and their little this and their little that and their whole lifestyle is characterized by good deeds they're just like Pharisees and hung up on them too thinking, you know, competing with them too Catholicism started as a competition against the Jews and it's been like that ever since okay, well then they got their eyes on the Jews and not on the Bible same thing with the Calvies and to a certain extent same same with the Dispies.
So for 2,000 years, this whole doctrine about the rapture, even where it's believed in, has been shallowly explained. Grossly misaccounted. And biggest problem of all is that the promise of the trib in the millennium is to Christ. Christ has promised that time. He's the king of the Jews. He has to have a kingdom. He's the one who won in the cross. When he died on the cross, he was owed two kingdoms. Kingdom of the Jews. And since he's dying at that moment, this future kingdom he's owed is still future and still owed. Preterists just cut all that out. Well, we replace Israel. No. He's king of the Jews. He died king of the Jews, not king of the church. But he is also after death. Now, after death, Hebrews 9, after death, after Getting a kingdom from Father, John 17 prayed for post-mortem. For beings born post-mortem. That's a second kingship. Uh, it is pre-Israel, Psalm 110. Two kingdoms. So when the preterist says church replaces Israel, the preterist is saying that there is no inheritance due to Christ. They're cutting out Christ. They're not just cutting out the Jews, which is their intent. They're cutting out Christ. He's king of the Jews. He is also king of kings. And those people cutting him out aren't going to be among those second class of kings. They're going to be second class citizens instead inside a kingdom that somebody who knew pre-trib rapture will inherit. You cannot become a king if you don't know pre-trib rapture. Ain't going to happen. Rapture is based on Christ. It's not based on Israel. Israel is inaugurated, again based on Christ, at the rapture. Trib starts because it's owed to Christ who vested on the cross. Christ is David's greater son. David's dead. Moses is dead. Abraham is dead. The Old Testament saints are dead. They are still owed something. Church doesn't take over from that. Now, I don't know if God could make it more obvious just how adamant he is about this brain fart of 2,000 years than what he did to Harold Camping. He gave him a stroke. The guy can't talk. Camping represented everything that's bad in dispensationalism, covenantal theology, replacement theology, and every anti you know, Semitic group who's ever been born. Camping was absolutely wacko. He couldn't add or subtract to save his life. He couldn't even read Revelation 9. He thought that that was talking about, he thought the locusts were evangelists. No, the evangelists were in Revelation 7 and they were talking about Jews. Yeah, but he couldn't read that. That would mean that everything he thought was wrong. So, God lets you have strong delusion. If ever there was a delusional guy, he's it. Well, everything he said was in a different format. Core to replacement theology.
church replaces Israel? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the two kingdoms promised to Christ are somehow just that Christ doesn't deserve them. Catholics replace Christ with a vicar on earth. Calvinists replace Christ with them replacing the Catholics. That's really hysterical. That was Calvin's position. He thought that his Calvinist group was going to replace the Catholic Church. So you got one retard fighting with another retard. Everybody going down that rabbit hole with Alice for 2,000 freaking years. And the demon boys, of course, are helping out. Because everybody born, even though he has a little bit of a lifetime, even though he can learn Bible on his own, and when I say on his own, I mean through a teacher, but he's still, you know, him personally learning it. And then they don't. Because it's too hard to learn that Greek and Hebrew. It's too hard to study all these verses that happened to people 3,000 years ago. I'd rather just sing rah rah Jesus songs and wonder if it's the end of the world. And take every earthquake or every bad event and say, see, the end of the world is coming. Chicken little, sky is falling. So it doesn't take much generation after generation for 2,000 years to sort of um, distract us into dear Dr. So-and-so who's so respectable and so ignorant. But the result that you get a Harold Camping who suddenly is front page news because he makes a spectacularly wrong prediction and now that he's front page news, God takes his mouth away. The ultimate statement of divine disapproval. I feel sorry for that guy because God really made a public spectacle of him. So if God made a public spectacle of him, you think it was only for his sake? Wouldn't it be better to take a, a lesson from him? And say, hey, wait a minute. This guy is spectacularly blind, and yet the things that he taught are in some form just the same in every Christian denomination. They really are. Because everything he said is based on the idea that church replaces Israel. Whoops. So that introduces the whole big trial thing because what you're going to see next has to do with our trial witness before God. And it's basically the story of two viewpoints. God's viewpoint only developed in you to the extent you're actually studying scripture under a teacher and using 1 John 1 9. And of course, that's especially true if you are a teacher or you are a scholar. Are you using 1 John 1 9? You got the gift of teaching, but are you using 1 John 1 9? If not, you're not in the system. And everything you teach is going to be garbage. That's a heavy load. It's really hard to be a teacher. All those blank faces you have to stare at every day. They have almost no desire to be there. And if you talk for more than five minutes without juicing it up with a lot of emotion, you lose them. Because they're not really interested in Bible. They're not really interested in learning. They just want to feel good. They're only there because you're a good luck charm. The sheep are not interested in God. Well, a few of them are. And that's why you get the nerve to keep teaching. That's one side. The few who want to learn. Do you learn God? Other side? Nah, we don't want to learn God. We want the cheap substitutes. 
that Satan's only too happy to provide us with, like works, rituals, human approbation. Dear Dr. So-and-so, we'll go with what he says so we can avoid studying Bible. And that's why preterism is popular and any view of the rapture that is even halfway valid is all full of titillation. The actual doctrine is rather sobering. It is not titillating. The doctrine is, hi, this, this time is owed Christ. And you have this royal job that requires you learn some thinking. And I know, you know, thinking is not fun. You got to plot at it. Philippians 3.14 You going to do that? Majority answer? No. And then we die. And then we stand in front of him. And then we find out what he was really doing with it because we didn't pay attention to all the available information down here, especially in the Bible. There you go. Oh. Why did I waste my life? 